Well, on that very theme, our preeminent foreign affairs writer in Australia, Greg Sheridan, he's a foreign affairs writer at the Australian newspaper, posited that Biden's humiliation and the deep concern in America at the way in which he's handled this and his own, well, there's no other way of putting it, a cognitive um, uh, imagery, I suppose you could say, or concerns about his cognitive capacity, means that he may be more beholden to his work base than ever. And their great concern at the moment, of course, is climate change uh, and Glasgow's coming up. And he posits that in the same way that Obama, this is a very Australian perspective, turned a blind eye to what was happening uh, in the South China Seas, the you know tarmacking and concreting over of atolls and establishment of aircraft bases and what have you, militarization of uh, the China Seas. Uh, Obama was inclined, President Obama turned a blind eye in, uh, uh, kept quiet because of promises in inverted commas about action on climate change. Now, the argument here is that what will happen in Glasgow is that the Chinese will offer something uh, in return mm -hmm. for America backing off on its uh, unlawful and combative attitude, as the Chinese have it, towards the authoritarianism. I think that's a very astute analysis. There's elements that I think are even in some ways more complex and therefore disturbing. But I would just say at first in, in remark to that scenario, uh, I think that people in the United States would then add, it's not just climate change, that they feel that economically uh, there are people especially in the high tech industry and Wall Street corporations that are woke, that feel that, uh, that the Biden administration should stop the Trump economic policies toward China and reopen it. And in exchange for that, we should uh, agree to their demands that we shouldn't be so critical of them or we shouldn't be so defensive about our own allies uh, toward them. But I think more particularly, where Biden differs from Obama, not that the results won't be the same, but they do differ. Joe Biden made a Faustian bargain with the hard left. And after the Democratic primaries, it was very clear that Kamala Harris had zero support. Pete Buttigieg was a terrible candidate. Cory Booker was a terrible candidate. Bernie Sanders could not win again. He was not nearly as successful as his first try. Elizabeth Warren did not, was not sick. All of them were too far left. There were no moderates. So Joe Biden basically should not have run. He was told by Barack Obama, quote unquote, Joe, you don't have to do this. He did this and in exchange, they said to him, we will stick by you and bring the 20 or 30% of the hard left. And then you will bring in the independent voter who is tired of the Trump tweeting and, and the controversies that surround him. Some of them, most of them are many of them created by the media. And then when you get into power, however, you've got to enact the green deal. So there was a formal agreement. The problem with Obama was that he wasn't beholden to anybody. He had a very different idea from the beginning. And his idea was that it was almost ornery, punitive toward America, who's uh, role in the world he was very suspicious of, its history he was suspicious of, take the Middle East. He really did want to empower Iran, Hezbollah, the Shia Persian minority and say, you know what, maybe the way to pay back our so-called pro-American Sunni Arab friends, the wealthy people in the Gulf, is to have a balance of power and we'll just see if they like that. And then I think as far as China went, the Spratly Islands and all that, he was telling a lot of our allies you know, uh, your Western capitalist democratic allies and you have inequality you haven't addressed and all of this stuff. And maybe you should just uh, take a deep breath and, and start to deal with China and see if you like that, if we're friendly with China. So it was a it was almost a triangulation away from our, our traditional allies as he did in the Middle East and also with China. And uh, the irony and the tragedy of all this is that Donald Trump saw that, somebody without political experience, and he came in to restore our traditional support for Israel, our antagonism to the theocracy, 
our traditional support for Australia, the Philippines, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, Korea, to stand up to North Korea, to stand up to China. But the problem was that without experience in politics, he first of all didn't have people he could draw on because the bipartisan foreign relations establishment distrusted him. And second, People were so angry that they felt the left had controlled the political discourse. They wanted somebody to fire back. But Trump, when he fired back, he was he was firing at a media atmosphere that there was no way of winning anybody over. So whether it was Russian collusion or the the lies about Hunter Biden's laptop being Russian disinformation, the media and the intelligence and military complex could he was an, a voice in the wilderness and he made it worse the more unjustly he was treated the angrier he got and you know it was a tragic he was a tragic figure because he did a lot of good and if people had just said he's eccentric and prone to be a little off but we in the opposition and we in the media and we in wall street we in the you know are going to treat him like we did you know george hw bush or a regular opponent they didn't they wanted to destroy him and and he uh, he was not able to get a second term. If he was president right now, for all we would know what would it be like, John. He would be deterring our enemies. He would be helping the countries we talked about. There would be people within those countries saying they don't like him. They don't like his attitude. We would prefer Joe Biden had won the election, but they would deep down inside feel they were safer and that the West was stronger. And uh, people would be concentrating on the latest third impeachment, fourth impeachment, fifth impeachment. That's, and that's tragedy. That's the way it was. Thank you for watching this episode. If you value vital conversations like this one, please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.